are summarized here, you will of course have these in your notes for the previous lecture. Then the boundary conditions, uh, I mean uh, we have uh, expressed both in a dimensional form and in a non-dimensional form. So uh, the kinematic boundary condition, uh, uh, the, at the interface the kinematic boundary condition, this is the dimensional uh, form, this is the dimensionless form. The shear stress balance, uh, this is the dimensional form and this is the dimensionless form expressed in terms of capillary number. Normal stress balance, again dimensional form and dimensionless form. Uh, just to help you to recapitulate how to recover the dimensional, dimensionless form from the dimensional form, I will uh, briefly uh, say take up any, any, any one of these boundary conditions. Say the normal stress boundary condition for example. So uh, you have for example P dash minus P dash atmosphere, uh, we have seen that minus tau dash dot n dot n that particular term in terms of order will be one order less important as compared to the P minus P dash term. So we will just keep this as it is, say this will uh, be roughly sigma dash by r. We will discuss about this excess pressure ex extra term uh, which uh, we attributed mainly due to Van der Waals forces of interaction when the film thickness becomes very small. So uh, this is Pc into P dash minus P dash atmosphere, sorry P minus P atmosphere. This is uh, what uh, sigma 0 into sigma by R and 1 by r is this one. So uh, in the slides I have not put del dash, uh, delta dash, uh, but just to emphasize that it is a dimensional uh, operator that we are talking about, we are, uh, I mean I have put it uh, in the form of dash here. So this is minus epsilon del H del X, uh, sorry first let us write the del dash operator. So I del del X dash plus J del del Y dash dot product with N. So what is N? Minus epsilon del H del X I plus J, right? This was N. So now uh, this becomes now del del X dash. X dash is what? X into LC. So this will become. I mean this total operator will become 1 by LC del del X. So this will become minus epsilon by LC del square H del X square, right. What is PC? Tell from your notes what is PC? Yes, mu UC by epsilon square LC. So you multiply both sides by PC, uh, basically 1 by PC, that is divide both sides by PC. So uh, I mean P EX dash we are talking about. So P minus P atmosphere 
is equal to sigma 0 epsilon square L c by mu u c into minus epsilon by L c del square h del x square sigma plus p x prime divided by p c. Right? So, here L c and L c get cancelled. So, this term becomes mu u c by sigma 0 is capillary number. So, minus epsilon cube by capillary number sigma del square h del x square. Okay. So, uh, we will get back to the slides and see that that is what is that minus epsilon cube by sigma capillary number del square h del x square that is there as that term and last term is p dash x by p c. So, this is the normal stress balance. Now, in this analysis we have assumed that the surface tension along the liquid gas interface may vary. Now, question is how can it vary? This variation may come from various sources. What are the sources? For example, temperature variation along the surface, presence of surfactant etcetera. Since the surface tension is a strong function of temperature and surfactant concentration, non-uniformity of temperature and surface tension might cause surface tension gradients. As an example, the surface tension may be expressed in terms of a function of temperature. So, as I told you that many fluids will actually have surface tension coefficient strongly depending on temperature for water the variation is typically linear, but there are other fluids for which higher order variations are also there. So, uh, this is the typical form and then if temperature varies with x, then surface tension will vary with x. Now, what about the term p dash x or the excess pressure across the interface? For very thin films typically in the range of microns or nanometers there can be extra contribution from van der Waals forces in the form of disjoining pressure. This is simply a pressure jump across the interface just like a Laplace pressure, but due to van der Waals forces. So, these forces become important only when the film thickness becomes so small that intermolecular forces also play a dominating role. So, one typical way of representing it mathematically is the, this particular form. I mentioned you a reference book where you will get the details of uh, this variation, but to summarize you can have in a continuum calculation this as uh, parameter a by uh, scales as a parameter a by h prime cube, the 6 pi is just a multiplying parameter. This parameter a is known as Hamaker's constant and uh, uh, I mean it is possible to uh, get the Hamaker's constant for various interactions by considering intermolecular forces and therefore, the normal stress balance. So, the in a dimensionless form will look like this if you are considering the excess pressure. So, in many problems in microfluidics and nanofluidics this excess pressure term is very important. Now, one very important task that is still left is what is u c and what is v c. Okay. So, that, that depends on what is dominating. So, if the surface tension gradient is dominating, so surface tension gradient means the tangential gradient of surface tension. So, let us look into the equation from which we get the scale, this equation. What is this equation? This is a scenario when the surface tension gradient is dominating. So, if the scenario is the surface tension gradient is dominating, then the velocity scale will be decided by this balance. Now, in this balance 
what is the order of del u 0 del y of the order of 1 because these are scaled suitably with normalizing parameters designed to be between 0 to 1. The dimensionless uh, if u is 0 is a dimensionless u and y uh, I mean 0 th order u and y is a dimensionless y both u0 and y are constrained to be between 0 and 1 that is how uc has to be ascertained. So that means this is of the order of 1 the surface gradient of sigma this is also dimensionless designed to be of the order of 1 therefore epsilon beta by capillary number should be of the order of 1. So uh, quickly let us do it in the board. <coughs> <coughs> so, epsilon beta <coughs> by mu uc by sigma 0 is of the order of 1 that means uc will be epsilon beta sigma 0 by mu. So, we, we can <coughs> get back to, to that slide where various scales are ascertained epsilon sigma 0 beta by mu that is how the surface tension gradient driven velocity scale can be ascertained. Then a scale based on normal stress that is if the Laplace pressure is dominant. So you have to see this is where physics of the problem comes into the picture. What is dominant it is based on your judgment like mathematics will not tell what is dominant. But mathematics will tell that based on what is dominant what is the scale that will be dictated by the mathematics but physics will dictate what what is what is the physical effect dominant. So if you get back to that equation see in this equation equation number 17 in the slide you see that P s minus P atmosphere this is designed to be between 0 to 1. So sigma del square h del x square that is also designed to be between 0 to 1. So epsilon cube by capillary number should, should be of the order of 1 if the Laplace pressure is dominating. So let us come to the board epsilon cube by <coughs> capillary number of the order of 1. So epsilon cube sigma 0 by mu uc is of the order of 1 that means uc is of the order of epsilon cube sigma 0 by mu. Okay. So you can see that the analysis of the problem it is sensitively dependent on the scale and if you ascertain the scale wrongly the entire analysis will be wrong. So you have to be very very critical and judicious about the choice of scale. If the excess pressure is dominant, if the excess pressure is dominant so you can see that P excess so that is actually P dash excess divided by P c. So P dash so let us get back to that uh, get back to equation 17. So if all the terms of the are of the order of 1 that means P dash excess into epsilon square LC by mu uc that is of the order of 1. So that means p dash excess 
mu c is of the order of p dash x s epsilon square l c by mu. Okay. So, if this is dominating, if this is not dominating, this will not dictate what is the scale, then it is magnitude will depend on what scale you have ascertained based on other influencing parameters. But if this is the influencing parameter, that will dictate the scale. So, uh, let us say that there are groups of people. Now, whoever is the leader has to play the leading role and the others will follow that. So, whatever is the leading or dominant factor that will dictate the scale and the relative magnitudes of the others will be decided by that scale. So, they will not themselves influence the scale. <coughs> x body force is dominant, x body force is dominant. So, you can see that this is the body force term in the x momentum equation, right. Whatever is written in the slide epsilon square l c square rho g sin theta by mu u c, okay. So, this is the body force term in the x momentum equation. If all the terms, uh, I mean if the dominant term has to be of the order of 1, then this term being the dominant one also has to be of the order of 1 that will give you what is u c. And similarly, if the y body force is dominant, then this is the body force term in the y momentum equation and that will give uh, rise to a u c. So, you can see that different expressions for u c may appear depending on what is dominant and that has to be taken into account. So, now what we will do is we will try to make an attempt to derive the final version of the thin film equation which we will apply to solve a problem and that will give you a clear illustration of how these equations which appear to be bit cumbersome and interrelated how this can be used to solve a practical problem. So, uh, instead of getting back and forward to the slides all the time, I will refer to my notes and uh, start with the corresponding basic equations. Uh, we will start with, so our objective is uh, thin film equations. Uh, so, objective is derivation of a governing differential equation for h as a function of x t. This is what is our objective of what we are going to do, <coughs> okay. So, we will start with the y momentum equation. What is the physical scenario? So, you have a solid boundary over which you have some interface thin film h as a function of x t and you have x and y axis set up in this way, where the angle of inclination of the inclined plane with the horizontal is theta <coughs> and g is acting vertically downwards. So, y momentum equation del p 0 del y these are there in your slides or notes plus epsilon cube l c square rho g cos theta by mu u c equal to 0, okay. Next what we will try to do? We will integrate this equation with respect to y, right. So, p variation with y cannot be ruled out here because the gravity effect is there. You might argue, see there are there are so many arguments. You might argue that yes, it is all right, but the film thickness is small. So, how will pressure variation in that thickness play a decisive role, right? That might be an intuitive cross argument, 
that why should we bother about pressure variation with y because the dimension along y normally we take the gravity effects important for pressure variation or when the depth change is significant. Now here we have already presumed a thin film, so the depth change is not significant despite that y momentum equation is important and we will see why, so the analysis will make it clear. <coughs> So, if you integrate it with respect to y, then P0 is equal to minus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c y plus what? Function of x and t. See, the variables are x, y, and t say C x t. So, what is the boundary condition? Boundary condition, so this requires one boundary condition, what is that? At y is equal to h which is a function of x t, p 0 is equal to say P s pre pressure at the free surface and we have a boundary condition which relates pressure at the free surface with the atmospheric pressure P s minus P atmosphere. So, at y is equal to x uh, at y is equal to h, so P s is equal to minus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c h plus c x t. So, what is c x t? P s plus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c h. Okay. So, we can write P 0 is equal to P s plus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c into h minus y, where h is a function of x and t. This is the governing equation for P 0. Now, P s is not a constant, right? P s is governed by the pressure normal stress jump boundary condition across the interface, which is given by P minus P atmosphere that formula. So, we will write that. So, I am giving you the most general formulation so that any complicated problem you can solve even using this formulation. So, I will retain all the terms including the excess pressure. Although for simplicity when we I demonstrate a problem in the class I will work out a problem which I can work out analytically in the board without much of uh, calculation, but uh, the formulation that I will give will be pretty general and you can uh, take it up for solving many complicated problems. So, uh, what is P s? So, P s is equal to again if you look into your notes you will get this equation P atmosphere minus epsilon cube by capillary number sigma del square h del x square plus epsilon square L c by mu u c this one. Okay. So, P s what is very important to keep in mind is that P s is itself also a function of x and t because h is a function of x and t. So, this is implicit it will appear as if it is a constant, but it is also a function of x and t because it is a function of h 
which in turn is a function of x and t okay. So, these are subtle things so it is important to bring it up. Now let us write the x momentum. So, x momentum <coughs> minus del p 0 del x plus del square u 0 del y square plus epsilon square L c square rho g sin theta by mu u c is equal to 0. Yes, right. So, now we will use this equation for getting what is del p 0 del x. So, what is del p 0 del x? So, this is equal to minus del p s del x minus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c del h del x plus epsilon square L c square rho g sin theta by mu u c. So, we will uh, what we will do? We will alter this sign and write it as del square u 0 del y square. Now, this gives an answer to the question that I posed that although the film thickness is small, still we are considering the y momentum effect and that effect comes into the picture because the pressure variation is with h and h is a function of x, right. Had h not been a function of x, that would not have been important, but pressure variation is a function of h and h is a function of x. So, uh, that makes it coupled with the x momentum equation which one plus yes, yes this is plus this is uh, this is minus yes. In terms of a shorthand notation, we can write del del x of P s plus epsilon cube L c square rho g cos theta by mu u c h del square u 0 del y square right. So, the shorthand notation See the right hand side with respect to integration with respect to y is a constant because the right hand side is a function of x and t but not y. So, this is function of x t. So, this entire thing 
let us call it capital A just for ease in writing. Now we will integrate it with respect to y. So del u del y is equal to a y plus we have not used C1, so we can use C1 right u0 and u0 is a y square by 2 plus C1 into y plus C2 which is a function of x and t. C1 is also a function of x and t, but already we have written in the previous step, so I have not written again. Now we need to apply the boundary conditions to get C1 and C2. So what are the boundary conditions? At y is equal to 0 u0 equal to 0. This is the straightforward no slip boundary condition. If, if there is a slip boundary condition instead of this you apply the slip boundary condition straightforward. So all the problems that we have worked out with no slip boundary condition I will give you a homework of repeat those with slip boundary condition. And this homework is a very important homework because I will try to uh, relate this homework with some problem in the end semester examination that I will uh, end semester questions that I will give. So this is supposed to be an important homework, please do this carefully. So at y equal to 0, u0 equal to 0. So that means 0 equal to okay let us write the other boundary condition and then we will apply that what is the other boundary condition see when you write the boundary condition the mathematical form you can retrieve from the notes but try to first say what is the physical boundary condition that we want to write here what what is the physical condition hmm? not no shear I mean there could be shear because of surface tension gradient. So the tangential stress balance or tangential force balance better to say not st stress balance is not a correct term you cannot balance stresses. So tangential force balance. So tangential force balance what it gives we have worked out that but just at y equal to h del u0 del y is equal to epsilon beta by capillary number surface gradient of sigma. What is this del tilde? If you recall this is del del x plus del del y into del h del x. We have discussed all this, this is just like every time it is not necessary that we again go back to where from we started discussing and we, so I am just giving you the summary. So we need to calculate C1 and C2 based on these conditions which we will do in a moment at y equal to 0, u0 equal to 0. So that means uh, but before that at y equal to h del u0 del y. Uh, is equal to epsilon beta by capillary number uh, del tilde sigma from that we can find out what is C1 right. So we can find out what is C1 from the boundary condition 2 use boundary condition 2. So if you use the boundary condition 2 then 
epsilon beta by capillary number del tilde sigma is equal to a h plus c 1, which means c 1 is equal to epsilon beta by capillary number del tilde sigma. minus h then the for this one use boundary condition number 1 so at y equal to 0 u0 0 equal to 0 that means c2 is equal to 0 So, we have got C 1 and C 2. So, we can write a compact expression for u naught which we which I will write in a moment. So, let me reproduce the expression for u naught. u naught is equal to a into y square by 2 minus y h plus epsilon beta by capillary number check whether substituting the boundary condition this comes this should come right you have checked it. So, what what is a where a is equal to del del x of epsilon cube l c rho g cos theta by mu u c h plus p s minus epsilon square l c rho g sin theta by mu u c. So, a is also a function of x and time. So, what equations we have used so far? Let us make an accounting we have to use all equations, we have to use all boundary conditions. We have seen that that is the system is perfectly closed. So, what are the things that we had in hand and what we have used? Let us make an accounting. So, x momentum, y momentum uh, before that continuity, x momentum, y momentum these three equations. Boundary conditions, no slip at wall, no penetration at wall, Then at the interface kinematic boundary condition, then normal force consideration and tangential force consideration at interface, these are at interface, right. So, let us see out of these what we had made use of. So, we have made use of the x momentum and y momentum, no slip at the wall, not yet no penetration at the wall, we have not used 
at yet as yet. Then interface, what boundary condition we have used? Tangential force. So we are yet to use the continuity equation, no penetration at the wall, kinematic boundary condition, normal force we have used. Where we have used? You have written, when we have written P0 as a function of PS, then that PS is in turn dictated by the normal force balance condition that is PS minus P atmosphere is a function of the surface tension and the excess pressure. So normal force we have used. So these circle things we have not yet used, continuity, no penetration at all and kinematic boundary condition. So let us try to do that. Now, uh, let us write the continuity equation. This is the continuity equation. Now what we will do is, we will integrate the continuity equation with respect to y. We will use a integral form of the continuity equation. This h is a function of x and t that we have to keep in mind. Next, what we will try to do is instead of working out this, we will try to bring this derivative outside the integral. But as we understand that because h is itself a function of x that cannot be done without making adjustment of terms and that is given by the Leibniz rule. So we will use the Leibniz rule here to evaluate the differential differentiation under integral sign. So the, let us write the Leibniz rule. Yes, yes, u0. So Leibniz rule Okay. So basically if you want to bring the derivative out of the integral sign, these two terms you have to make as an adjustment. I mean uh, I do not remember whether I have mentioned this, but let me try to uh, uh, point out here that this Leibniz rule what we are writing in mathematics is just like a manifestation of the Reynolds transport theorem. So if you see here that this is the rate of change for the system, this is the 
like the rate of change for the control volume and this is like outflow minus inflow okay so this is the see the beauty of mathematics see this is this has not been derived by considering system control volume or whatever but these are like the boundary terms the rate of changes in the boundary so that should be no it it depends on this is a function of what so here i mean the the case that what we are going to use see i mean it is it would have been better to write x comma t i have not written here this is a function of multiple variables so it is better to save to write this when this is a single variable function i mean i should have written here as b as a function of x and t b is like h here so let us write that okay had it been a function of a single variable it we could have written as uh, like d dx but concept remains same so here what is f f is u0 so del del x of integral u0 dy from 0 to h is equal to integral del del x of del u0 del x dy 0 to h plus u0 at x comma h right into del h del x next term is of course 0 because a itself is 0 right So, in place of this term we will write del del x of integral u0 dy 0 to h minus u0 at x h del h del x plus. So, this term we have written. Next term integral of next term is very straight forward del v0 del y from 0 to h. So, v 0 at x h minus v 0 at 0 right. v 0 at 0 is 0 because of no penetration boundary condition right. So, we have now used the no penetration boundary condition. So, that is why. So, uh, I mean these things are important, these subtle steps are important because now if we encounter a problem where there are holes in the wall, then instead of that being 0, that will be replaced by velocity at which fluid is flowing through the holes at the wall, right. So, no penetration boundary condition, you have to think in a general manner. When there is no hole, there is no penetration, but if there is hole, there will be penetration. So, this is equal to 0. Now, we have not used the kinematic boundary condition. What is the kinematic boundary condition? Kinematic boundary condition is V0 kinematic boundary condition is equal to del h del t plus u0 del h del x at interface right. This is the total derivative of h with respect to t. So, we can write u0 del h del x
or minus u0 del h del x which one this is all right this is the kinematic boundary condition right so minus u0 del h del x plus v0 is equal to what at the interface is equal to del h del t right so that means you can replace this term by del h del t that is how we have used the kinematic boundary condition so this integrating the continuity equation gives us a natural way of incorporating the kinematic boundary condition at the interface so kinematic boundary condition has also been utilized so we are left with del h del t plus del del x of integral u0 dy from 0 to h is equal to 0 and u0 as a function of h you know what is u0 so let us write a into y square by 2 minus y h plus epsilon beta by capillary number del tilde sigma y right so integral u0 dy from 0 to h is equal to a this will become h cube by 6 minus this will become h cube by 2 right plus epsilon beta by capillary number h square by 2. So, this is what? This is 1 minus, so minus a h cube by 3 right plus epsilon beta by capillary number is not s this is sigma so you are left with del h del t plus del del x of minus a h cube by 3 plus epsilon beta by capillary number this is equal to 0. We have utilized all equations and all boundary conditions, right. This equation has only one unknown dependent variable that is h, right. In A also there is implicit h, the A is function of h and other terms explicitly have h. So, this is the governing equation for h as a function of x and t which we will solve. So, we have come up with one governing differential equation which is a PDE and uh, that, that PDE we have to solve for h as a function of x and t and there are some non-linearities in this equation as well. So, uh, in the next lecture we will take it up from here. What we will do is we will summarize the generalized algorithm that has led to the derivation of the final form of this equation so that you can apply this for any problem and then we will work out a specific problem which will be giving rise to a governing differential equation that is a special form of this and we will uh, solve that special form and uh, give you some physical insight on a very important problem that is spreading of a droplet on a surface and we will do that in the next lecture. Thank you very much.